Now, I don't know about you, but I love William Hartnell's Doctor. The gruff old man persona with just the right amount of whimsy mixed in makes for an extremely enjoyable performance. Hartnell really took everything that was great about his predecessor and took it to the next level. But here's a question for you. Who was Hartnell's predecessor? I mean, we all just assume that since every doctor was regenerated into a new one and the new ones had to come from somewhere that the same was true for Hartnell. But do you really remember who the doctor before Hartnell was? Or is there something fishy going on at the BBC that we've been taking for granted? First off, let's figure out who played this mysterious Zeroth Doctor. Well, as shown in the docudrama An Adventure in Time and Space, Verity Lambert was captivated by the Royal Shakespeare Company's March 1958 performance of Innuendo and Deception, the lead actor of which was one Chris Walker Jr. When casting for the recently greenlit Doctor Who was underway later in the year, Verity insisted that Walker was excellent for the role, and once an audition was conducted, Warris Hussein wholeheartedly agreed. So, case closed. From 1959 to 1963, Chris Walker Jr. played the first Doctor before being replaced by William Hartnell. Or did he? See, we're always told that Walker is the original Doctor. All the classic promo material features him, Omni-Doctor lineups always start with him. But can you remember the last Chris Walker Jr. episode you saw? Its title, the premise, the villain? Well, the BBC would have you believe that the reason you can't remember many of his stories is because a majority of them were white before all the Hartnell and Troughton tapes were. They claim that ten years before the Great Deletion of 1978, a rogue, time-traveling Hartnell elitist broke into the archives and started burning the Walker tapes in defiance of his rival, a Walker elitist. People working at the BBC archives at the time managed to sneak away a few episodes and outtakes before the flames consumed the rest but there are still many episodes of his era missing. In order to shed further light on this incident, I got into contact with Dr. Roman Jimless, an independent archivist specializing in the early years of Doctor Who. Here's what he had to say. So, what happened was, in 1968, uh, while they were still airing the invasion, a young man suddenly appeared in the archives with a lighter. He went right over the tapes of the Walker Jr. episodes and started burning them one by one. Reports say that he actually went over each individual frame to, to make sure that you couldn't make out anything of the content of the frames. And he did that for about 25 minutes straight until someone noticed and uh, started relocating the tapes while he was distracted. Then uh, eventually after about minus two plus three high hours, the time police showed up and arrested him. So, just how many Walker episodes were lost in that? Well, of the about uh, 145 episodes from this time as the Doctor, it's estimated that probably two thirds of those were destroyed. And this was in the era before Doctor Who was really sent off overseas, so it's very probable that those episodes are lost forever. Okay, so Chris Walker Jr. episodes are hard to come by, fair enough. Uh, there were always audio recordings of his episodes, or are there? See, if we had audio recordings of his episodes, we would know what his Doctor sounded like. I mean, the voice is a very distinctive feature of a person. The fourth Doctor's voice is extremely unique. It's, a, it's very deep, he sounds very sure of himself, but still with that childlike whimsy in his speech. See, you're, just, you're hearing his voice in your head right now as I'm describing it to you. But what did the Zeroth Doctor sound like? Was he authoritative, overtly eccentric? Did he speak with a Liverpool accent or an Essex dialect? Well, when I asked Dr. Jimless the same question, his answer was more informative than one might at first think. Take a listen. Verity Lambert actually described Chris Walker's voice in the 40th anniversary documentary as being an undulating sine wave in human form. You'd hear him talk and it'd be almost mechanical in nature, like it was being modulated. Uh, it was quite deep as well, and he insisted on having a catchphrase of saying excellent when things were going his way. Don't you understand? It's all starting to fall into place now. The modulated voice, the catchphrase of excellent. The tapes were destroyed by a Hartnell elitist. You know what ended the first Doctor's era? A Cyberman story. You know when the tapes were supposedly destroyed? During the broadcast of the invasion. A Cyberman story. You know what happened in 1958? The year Walker was supposedly cast? Kit Peddler 
and Jerry Davis, creators of the Cybermen, got a cup of tea on a Sunday afternoon. Not only that, but after I talked to Dr. Jimless, I went back to 1968 to ask about the tape burnings. But nobody knew what I was on about. Uh, according to the people I spoke to, the burnings never happened. But you know what did happen between 1968 and now? The 1980s, the JNT era. era. The era of the Urshock Cybermen. The ones that script editor Eric Sayward loved so much. That's right, the Chris Walker Jr. Doctor has been a hoax perpetrated by Big Sayward to get us to love the 80s Cybermen as much as he did. Man, I sure do love the Chris Walker Jr. Doctor.